It's about 50 years ago, I think, since C.P. Snow wrote that uh, influential text, The Two Cultures, in which he identified a kind of division within civil society and a division amongst what might be seen as classes of people within that society. Uh, and the two classes he identified as those who were uh, primarily associated with the humanities, people who studied law, or politics, or um, English, or something like that, at one of these prestigious universities, and this other class of people who were more involved with science and technology. Uh, and the claim that C.P. Snow is making, and I think it was probably accurate, is that the, the civic institutions, government, uh, uh, maybe the medical profession, the legal, the sort of structures of, uh, of the legal frameworks, that kind of thing, all those institutions tended to be governed and populated by people who were coming up through the humanities. Um, so, you know, if you worked in government, you'd probably done something like politics and law at Oxford, or you may have studied English literature and, and so on. Um, and if you were studying a science or a technology subject, or if you allied yourself with that frame of reference, uh, you were probably not in a position to make policy decisions and to contribute towards the cultural ambitions of the country, that kind of thing. Uh, C.P. Snow recognised that as a problem and argued the case that people who were coming up through science and technology should have a greater voice in government and in policy making. Uh, and to the extent that the overall paradigm of there being to a divided society across those lines is accurate, uh, that change does seem to have taken place, I suspect. And I'm reminded here that uh, one of our previous Prime Ministers here in the UK, Margaret Thatcher, bless her, uh, did actually do a science degree. I think she was one of the first Prime Ministers to have a, a science and technology background. Which is kind of indicative, I think. Uh, so it seems that if we are living in two cultures, and I'm not even sure the overall paradigm holds true these days, but to the extent that we might be, uh, it's no longer true, I would suggest, that um, but the humanities paradigm, or the humanities wing of those two cultures, is dominant. In fact, if anything, the reverse may be true, or at least um, there seems to be a fear that the reverse may be true, uh, in the sense that the um, science and technology uh, elements within society uh, are extremely highly valued, quite rightly in my opinion, I have to say. To the, and also within that, I think, uh, as, a, as a consequence perhaps of that, uh, aspects of society which would normally ally themselves more closely to humanity uh, seem, to be to, seem to try to gain political clout by allying themselves more closely to uh, the science and technology. Uh, half of that binary. And I'm thinking here particularly about how religion is increasingly, not so much in this country, although to a certain extent in this country, but certainly in other parts of the world, in the US for example, how religion is increasingly um, understood or trying to be understood uh, in, in scientific terms. Uh, so we try to, uh, well we try, hard times don't do not, but there are attempts constantly being made in certain parts of the state to, uh, to get religion, religious uh, education placed within science curricula. Because science, because of what I've already said, seems to confer uh, a kind of prestige or a value on, uh, or would confer it on religion if it was taught in that context regardless of its appropriateness, just simply, the, simply the, um, the placing of the subject within the frame of reference of science gives it the prestige associated with that particular half of the culture, uh, I think. Obviously there's huge problems with that, and I think uh, it's misguided, of course. 
But I think one of the uh, sort of problems which is not acknowledged, and it's not acknowledged in a lot of the writings by uh, science writers, and I think I'm thinking of Dawkins, but also um, Carl Sagan, for example, or uh, many of the writers on science who uh, make these quite uh, ambitious claims for its status. One of the things I think that's ignored in that, or downplayed in that, is the, uh, is the importance of the humanities. And it's uh, the organized importance of the humanities. So whilst people like Dawkins or Sagan or other science writers may, uh, you know, make very poetic statements and very poetic claims about the power of music, for example, to to uh, to have a sort of effect, or to or great visual art, or great theatre work, to uh, to have um, you know humanist effects and, and create certain feelings and uh, have a power. That's not understood. So even though even though value seems to be being attributed to it, it isn't really. I don't think there isn't really the same value. There's not an exploration of what that value is. There's not an understanding of what that value is um, by anyone. I think can I, can I work in the arts myself, so even I'm not sure what that value is. I just know it exists. Um, so, so yeah, I guess what I'm saying there is that the, um, that kind of sparring that takes place between the two cultures, which in the 1950s seems to be favouring the humanities, in which these, in these days seems to be favouring the scientists and uh, presenting dominance of one or the other side, is counterproductive still, and is counterproductive today. And the counterproductivity is not because uh, the humanities, like, the art, like arts and religion and literature and so on, isn't because they are failed, um, failed scientists or failed pieces of technology. It's because they're not being understood correctly and they're not being valued appropriately. If they were valued appropriately, then people who are of a religious persuasion probably wouldn't even try to get their teachings done in classrooms, certainly in science classes.